Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. No, it's been a little bit since I've uploaded for my predictions. Just work, all those awesome, fun adult things, you know. But I've been seeing a lot of people put out videos talking about why John Jones is ducking Tom Aspinall. And before I really get into that and give my final thoughts and my final explanation, I guess it should it, it, you could call it, we're going to go through a couple articles with John Jones talking about it. I can't really put the video up, the interview of him talking about it, just simply because YouTube will take it down. And I want this video to get out and for people to see it and people to watch it. And then give me my their feedback, even though I understand people don't want to see the Steve Bay fight. Again, we'll get into all of that after we look at these articles and see what Tom, uh, John is talking about. Uh, see what John Jones is talking about, what Tom Aspinall like, what he's talking about, Pereira. Either way, let's jump into it. So first we have uh, Dana White doesn't see John Jones and Stipe Miocic riding off into the sunset just yet. Stipe, I could see he's a couple years older, five years older than John Jones. He's 42, or at least he'll be 42, if not already 42 years old, you know. And the interesting thing is, of course, Thomas is exploded onto the scene. There hasn't really been so much... Um, Surprising wins, I would say. I don't know anybody that was picking Curtis Blades. I don't know anybody that was picking... Well, actually, people were picking Sergei Pavlich because they didn't realize how much of a fraud he was. Uh, which I had been calling from day one. Let's be real. Go back and look at the videos. They're all there. You can check them out. You know, you know and then again, it says, Since then, Jones has postponed his title defense against Stipe from a year ago until UFC 309, where they headlined Madison Square Garden, of course... Breathing down their necks, neck is interim champ Tom Aspinall, who made it clear he's the number one guy in the heavyweight division with three straight victories, one of those being a rare interim title defense in Jones, more than a year-long absence. Of course, this article is leaving out the fact that John Jones got hurt. It's not like John is like, hey, I'm going to take a year off, da 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 that's why I haven't fought. No, 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 no. Article. Not doing a very good job posting and letting the audience know what is actually going on. So... Again, I think it's very interesting to know when you're talking about these things because that right there is being like, well, John has been out. He's not doing this. No, no, no. The reality is John was supposed to fight Stephen Mildred's last year or yeah, late last year or something like that. So John gets hurt, tore, uh, torn peck, I believe it was. There's a video of it. Whether you believe that's true or not, it, it's on a video thing saying that John had a... Uh, got injured. Whether you believe it's the torn pec or believe whatever it is, John Jones got injured. Couldn't fight the year that he was supposed to fight. Supposed to, couldn't fight Stipe when he was supposed to. So, and then, you know, Tom gets all this clout because John is out and John can't defend his title even if he wanted to, to be honest. So, Tom, you know, beats Curtis Blades. Beats uh, uh, Sergei Spivak. Not Sergei Spivak. Jesus. Sergei Pavlich. And then he beats, who is his third straight, who is his other victory after coming back from Curtis Blades? I can't remember who that was. I'm trying to think. I know Curtis was the most recent. Sergey was a uh, short notice fight. Because it was supposed to be Volkov, I believe, in that one. And then coming back from the first Curtis Blades when he got hurt, when he hurt his, tore, I think, towards ACL or something. God, who was that? I can't remember. Let me know. Let me know in the comment section. But uh, I can't remember who that was. No one really impressive because the matter of the, okay. We'll we'll get into that afterwards. But either way, back on to the uh, article. So suddenly the dispute with Tom Aspinall, even with Tom Aspinall staking his claim for the title unification bout against the winner, there's no guarantee either Jones or Miocic will fight on after UFC 309 is over and done with. Both men have just, been, have just about done it all in their careers with Jones, 37, approaching his 40s, and Miocic already 42 years old. Though the age is just a number, with UFC CEO Dana White thinking the veterans will give a young guy, young gun, what the fuck, a young gun like Tom Aspen only chance to compete for the undisputed title, which is what the Brit has been asking for for the, over, for the last 12 months. And Tom Aspen all goes on to say, um, oh wait, yeah, I, oh no, this is Dana saying, I truly believe whoever wins this fight, just competitively the way these guys are wired, 
and the reason they are both massive legends in the sport. They're not going to just ride off into the sunset without dis dis settling the dispute with Tom Aspinall. And Dana's correct. Dana continuously talks about the fact that he does not believe at all that John or Stipe would just be like, after this fight, just be like, I'm done. Will the loser ride off to the sunset? Sure, yes, sure. Um, but there's no way the winner of this doesn't at some point fight Tom Aspinall. Just doesn't happen. So, I can get this fucking hair out of my face. Then, White believes Jones and Miocic would return favor to Aspinall. So, again, in this article, it says, in the time away from competition, Jones has shown not even the slightest interest in unifying the titles against Aspinall. On Friday, Jones confirmed to Kevin Ioli he'd more likely not fight Aspinall after Miocic, saying the interim champ might be cooled today, but gone, maybe gone tomorrow, preferring a super fight with UFC light heavyweight champion, Alex Pereira, a superstar in his own right instead. I mean, let's let's be honest. If we're just talking about in the heavyweight division, of course Tom is the is the star and is the guy that John needs to fight. We're all in agreement for that for sure. Who causes more of a threat? Tom Aspinall, who we haven't really seen a whole ton. We haven't seen adversity at all. And now I know people can make the argument you haven't seen adversity because there's been haven't been anything anyone to give him a struggle. Okay, sure, but he also hasn't fought anybody. Fighting Sergey, who hasn't fought, who's who was a fraud to begin with. Um, fighting Curtis Blades, who was awful against heavy-handed strikers. Let's just be honest, right there, then and there. So there's that. So again, it keeps talking about right here. Um, on the other hand, Miocic isn't focused on retirement at all. No, Miocic has been out for a little little while. He's also been able to heal from the Francis Ngannou fight, the crazy knockout he had there, and is totally locked in on the fight with Bones. So where where will the accomplishment heavyweights' heads be be with yet another championship win at 309? We already know that. When you think about John Jones becoming a young seed champion in light heavyweight history and all the things and Stipe things that Stipe accomplished. They were given opportunities, you know, make sure, yeah, okay. Um, you know when they were young and I think they were reciprocate, reciprocate, what? White set of Jones, Miocic potentially unifying the title against Aspinall. People will lose their minds if either one of those fights happens. Of course, because the whole narrative right now, it's the same thing with political news. It's the same thing with news at all, media at all. They're not showing everything. And also, they're, they're playing dumb a little bit. Again, we'll get into that as well. So, next thing, that's, there's that article, which, again, is correct. Dane has always talked about what he thinks, you know, about this, you know. Next, and then, uh, you know, John sa explains why Alex Pereira fight more appealing to the UFC title unification versus Tom Aspinall. All right, so, he's, they're talking about here that he's coming back. You know, on November 16th, the fight, Stipe Miocic, which is eight days from today. So, you know, Miocic is 20 and 4 overall, 14 and 4 in the UFC. Aspinall's 15 and 3, 8 and 1 in the UFC. Again, again, the one loss shouldn't be a loss. Let's be real, it's a injury. So, he says, more than likely not. Jones told Kevin Ioli, which we read in the last article. Asked if he would fight Aspinall after 309. I feel like Tom Aspinall is, I don't want to say it, a nobody, but he just hasn't proven anything, which is correct. He hasn't done anything. Again, correct. I understand he won his belt against Ser Sergey, and Sergey just got slaughtered by someone else, so it's like I'm not here to gamble someone else making a name off of me. Now, again, correct. Correct. I've been saying this for a long time. Tom Aspinall, hasn't, he needs to beat somebody. He, he hasn't fought any grapplers. Oh, he fought Sergey Spivak. Okay, who's generally win, win a couple, lose a big one. Win a couple, lose the big one. I, I mean, come on here. Come on now. So, keep going. Um, Aspinall will become an interim champion by beating Sergey Spivak. Uh, Sergey Pavlich, Jesus. At UFC 295, the original date for Jones to face Miocic before his pe pectoral injury. UFC created an interim title in Jones' absence with Aspinall claimed with a first-round knockout. Shocker. Not shocked at all. 
Aspinall has only has one loss in the UFC, which came to do with an injury. 15 seconds in the meeting, first meeting with Curtis Blades. And of course, they rematched in that, in, you know, later on in that date when he, once he came back. Despite Aspinall's um, defeats in the heavyweight division, Jones remains unimpressed, as he should be. What has he done impressive? Beat Sergey? Not very good. Curtis Blades? Terrible against big base strikers. What, Tom Aspinall beating Rodrigo Nascimento is good? Not really. I'm here to compete against guys. Uh, when we look back, you know, 10 years from now, you'll be like, John Jones fought this guy and that guy, this legend and that champion and this champion. Again, correct. It's different when you have like Ilya Teporia saying he wants to go fight Islam Makachev simply because Ilya, yes, just now he's he finished Max Holloway. As impressive as that is, he shouldn't fight Islam Makachev. I I'm sorry. But, you know, John has beaten everybody. Whether you think he's had some close fights or not, sure, still beaten everybody. He's proven to, to, to do exactly what he says he's going to do. Whatever you think of John or not, he has still done those things. So, I mean, this statement right here is, is, is true. This statement right here is true. We don't know. Because he hasn't fought anybody. Like, he hasn't fought Ciro Gan, who was number one when John came back after the three years. He, you know, he hasn't fought uh, Jalton Almeida, which they might be scheduled. Not for sure, but still. Um, if Jones continues his career after UFC 309, only one fighter on the roster of physique has, uh, piques his interest. Sorry. Um, if there's one one there to be a fight, if there were to be a fight on, of a guy that's still in the UFC roster that would be not only financially worth it, but legacy worth it, it would be Alex Pereira. And you can see why. Because he's gone through the ringer, Pereira has. He's gone through the ringer in such a short amount of time. It's still more impressive than what Tom Aspinall has done. I'm sorry. We're both 37 years old right now. I weigh about 235, an incredible light heavyweight. I think Pereira walks around at 240. I think that fight would... Uh, would Go much farther on my legacy than a young man who's cool today and may be gone tomorrow. Again, correct. I remember a time when the whole world thought Johnny Walker was going to be the guy to beat me. No disrespect to Johnny Walker, but we all see how his career has played out. I've just been here too long to get all excited about someone who is hot today. I'm here for a legacy. I've been gambling way too much just to take a random fight. And again, again, he's correct I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to tell you guys he's correct if if Tom Aspinall went on a run where he started fighting everybody consistently or, or, or just do half of what uh, Tom Alex Pereira has done John would have fought him by now that's the reality if he beat Cyril Gan decisively if he beat Jelton Almeida decisively there's so many people. If he beat he, if he beat these fighters decisively, I'm not talking about finishing quickly. Sergey Pavlovich, unproven as hell, as hell. Same thing with Curtis Blades. Same thing. And then last article we have. All right, and then we can look here. Uh. Let's let's see. I don't know. Oh, right there. Okay. If you defeat them, will you defend your belt against Stas or Pablo who has taken on the title? More than likely not. More than likely not. I feel like Tom Aspinall is, uh, I don't want to say nobody, but um, just hasn't proven anything yet. Agreed. Correct.
Uh huh. And, you know, and again, like John Jones has talked about consistently, hopefully you guys could hear that. I will know once I'm off of this, but consistently John is talking about these meaningful fights. And I know so many people are hot on Tom Asmar right now, but do you know what John would do to Sergey? Do you know what John would do to Curtis Blades? He would destroy all of these people. Every one Tom has fought, John would beat as well. There's not one guy to where it's like, ooh, you know, like uh, Tom Aswell knocking out Curtis Blades as quick as he did. Is that impressive? No. No. Look at Derek Lewis beat, to him, beat him, how he beat him, how fast he beat him. Tom hasn't fought Derek Lewis, hasn't fought Johnson Almeida, hasn't fought Cyril Don. You have to do more. You have to. Is it impressive that he beat Sergei Pavlovich on, on a week's notice, or like however short notice it was, and with a bad back? Sure. Sure. But Sergei Pavlovich is lucky his back was hurt because it would have been worse if he had a full camp for Sergei Pavlovich. Short notice gets him caught with a left hook. Not hurt or nothing like that, but he still gets caught. With a full training camp, he doesn't even get caught. Doesn't even get caught. And as impressive as it was to beat Curtis Blades like he did... As aggressive as he looked in that fight, you can't do that with most times. Now, sure, you can make the argument the reason why he was aggressive because he knew he'd get Curtis Blades out of there. Sure. Fine. But there's been a lot of guys that didn't have to be aggressive and put themselves in bad in harm's way to get that finish. Like Derek Lewis. Like Sergey Pavlovich. Like all the people that have finished Curtis Blades. John's right. Tom hasn't done anything. He's not saying Tom Aspinall at some point, at this point, if he fought everybody in the division waiting for John Jones to come back after this uh, Steve Miocic fight, th there's no saying that, there's nothing not saying that John wouldn't fight him if Tom Aspinall proved himself. The matter of the fact is the guys that Tom Aspinall like, won his belt off, Sergey Pavlovich, not very good, fraud. And again, it's not like John is saying he wants to fight someone else. He's saying he wants to fight Alex Pereira. It's not an easy fight. If anything, it's a harder fight. Now, that's the reality here. That's the reality people just do not want to talk about. And it, it confuses me. It confuses me. People are always talking about how, oh, he's ducking Tom Aspinall. How is he ducking Aspinall? Because you guys think Tom's the next hot guy? On the on the in the in the heavyweight division and John's is the John is the heavyweight champion, so oh my god, the interim champion has to fight the heavyweight champion. Tom Aspinall hasn't done anything. Now, last thing we will do. Let's see. Let's let's see. Let let's let's look at this. People are so so ready. What the fuck? So ready. To, you know, talk down to John. Do all of these things. Uh, let's do this. No, 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 no. Oh, fuck. Let's go. Ugh. And then we're going to, we're, I'm sure I'm going to get some things. Oh, he's, uh, who else does he have to be? Well, I, I, I don't know. Let's look. Let's look. Okay, John, heavyweight champion. Sure. Okay, so let's see. Tom Aspinall hasn't beaten Sergey Gunn. Hasn't beat Jalton Almeida. You know, he never even came up and fought. To, uh, to, I don't believe. You know, he did beat Tybora. He did, he did finish him. Never fought jo uh, Rosenstreak. Never fought Lewis. Never fought Tyvasa. I don't think. I don't think fought Rodrigo. Not, uh, not Rodrigo, not Cemento. Uh, Delima. Even if he just fought the number one, like Almeida or Cyril Gan, I understand Cyril Gan might be might be running a little bit. I, I I get that. Fine. That's that's another argument there that he that's why he hasn't fought him. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, so we fought Tybora, Shore, Pavlish, Blades, Volkov, Spivak. Okay, let's see. Oops, close this. So Volkov. 
who's now three, which was a long time ago that he fought him. It was 2022, March 2022. He had his knee injury. Ty Bora, who's number nine. Okay. Pavlich, who's number four. And then Curtis Blades, who's number five. Okay, so he hasn't fought Cyril Gan, Jalton Almeida, Rosenstruck. I mean, even, even you know, Taito Avasa, when he was on his win streak, never, he never fought him. And people were just so high to elevate him so fast because everybody just thought he was high and mighty. He's the greatest heavyweight. This this is the guy. After beating, you know, Tybora, who's not great with big punchers. Beating Volkov, who's right now on his best winning streak as is. Um, I, I, I just don't understand it. People are so quick to judge and so quick to just be like, this is the guy. This is it. Nothing more about it. That's him. That's the guy. It's like, how do you know? We haven't fought him. We haven't seen him fight any wrestlers, any grapplers, and Sergey Gan, Jalton Almeida. Just, just even do fight Jalton Almeida. Show me how your ground game is. I need to see some adversity before you fight the greatest fighter of all time. We've seen adversity with Alex Pereira. We've seen these things. We've seen him get finished by Izzy. We've seen him get hurt early in fights by Izzy. We've seen him get hurt by Khalil Rauncher. Now people say, oh, Khalil was number eight. It doesn't even matter. He struggled with him. People are not given enough respect to, to um, uh, Khalil Rountree. Not giving enough respect. You know, my, 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 my closing thoughts on this is if Tom Aspinall did what Alex Pereira did, There'd be no conversation. I'm not saying I was, uh, uh, Tom Aspinall needs to move down a weight class or anything like that, but just go through the division a little bit. Go through the division. You know, his hardest fight in the octagon was Andre Arlovsky. Okay? Ty Bora, not great against big strikers. Curtis Blades, terrible against big strikers. Apparently, Volkov didn't have a ground game at all until... Like now, this is the best version of Volkov. So even if you just take Volkov as, as a great victory because you see what he's doing right now, sure. He still hasn't fought anybody. Who, who's his best opponent? Volkov? Because he's good right now. He wasn't great back then. Like this is the best version of Volkov we've seen. Again, even take all that out. He still never fought Cyril. Still never fought Jalton Almeida. Still never fought Rosenstruck. Still never fought Lewis. Still never fought Taibusa, Taibasa, never fought Dalima, never fought Costa, never fought Parkin, which I'm not expecting to fight Parkin or Costa, I'm just saying. It's the reality. Never fought, like I said, Derek Lewis, none of these guys. <sighs> Closing thoughts. When John Jones wins this fight against Stipe Miocic, he will call out Tom Aspinall. And they will fight, and we will see who the greatest of all time is. Even though we already know it's John Jones, baby. It's John Jones. You guys got to stop saying John's ducking people. It is the most baffling conversation. It's the most baffling thumbnails I keep seeing on YouTube. John has nothing to duck. Nothing. The fact is, Tom Aspinall is less impressive than Pereira. And that's why Pereira is on John's list. And Tom's not. As always, guys. Subscribe, like, comment. Let me know if you like this longer form content. See you guys in the next one. Peace.